All right, so this video is going to be a quick review on conic sections, okay? This is going to be something that we're really going to need when we talk about quadric surfaces, okay? Because that is going to bring up a lot of ellipses and a lot of hyperbolas, okay? So you've got to have a good understanding of what those are, all right? So we know there we're, we learned four different types of conic sections, okay? And the other two, you know, the, of course, the first two I've already named, ellipse and hyperbola, but the other two we already know, circle and parabola, okay? That's not going to be anything that's going to be hard for us to kind of understand with quadric surfaces, but ellipse and a hyperbola might be because that might be some stuff that you've forgotten. All right. Now, first, we're going to start with the ellipse. Okay. The ellipse for a, a horizontal ellipse. Okay. Meaning it's, it's major axis is going to be uh, parallel to the uh, X axis. Okay. That is X minus H quantity squared over a squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared. And that's going to equal one. Okay, and for ellipses, we're going to have A is greater than B, okay? So you notice that we have this A under X, okay? And this A is representing the, this is called the semi-major axis, okay? It's representing the semi-major axis, and A is the length of that, all right? So the reason why A is longer than B is because, of course, A is greater than B, right? So if A is greater than B, then, of course, this A is going to be longer, all right, and that's the difference between horizontal and vertical. Now, as far as your semi-minor axis goes, that's B, right? That's the distance from the center to the furthest point you go up on the Y. All right, and that's represented by B. Okay, not B squared, it's just represented by B. And you notice that's the only thing I have colored in red here, not the squared, because it's not part of it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the vertical equation. And here, you got the same exact equation. You're just switching A and B, okay? And what that means is that now your semi-minor axis is parallel to the x-axis, or it's on it in this case. And your semi-major axis is going to be parallel or on the y-axis, okay? So, and I say parallel because if your center is not on the origin, then this ellipse might be like over here, over here. But the semi-major axis is still going to be parallel to the y-axis. All right, so that's kind of the idea with ellipses. All right, so now we're going to move on to the hyperbola, okay? And really the, I guess, the, the only difference here is that now you have one term that's negative, okay? You have one term that's negative, and that's literally the only thing that's different about the horizontal equation, okay? So you have two hyperbolas, and they're facing outward. One's opening left, one's opening right. All right. And this A right here, this is on the, the positive term. Okay. And that is representing the distance from the center, okay, which in this case is the origin to the vertex of one of the hyperbolas. Okay. And the B, you don't really need to worry about that. Uh, I drew it as the distance from the vertex to the uh, asymptote that goes through, but you don't need to know that for uh, what we're going to talk about in the next couple videos. And lastly, for the vertical equation, for the hyperbola, you just have the negative on the other term, okay? So now it's on the x term, all right? And you you still have your a is going to stay on your positive term, okay? And that's still going to represent the same thing as it has, okay? A is representing that distance between the the, the center and the vertex on one of the hyperbolas. Okay, and really, I mean, well, you can see here, this is just this graph turn 90 degrees and then you get that, all right? So we're just going to do a, a quick example of both an ellipse and a hyperbola, just to make sure you're kind of you're caught up here with what we're about to be doing with quadric surfaces and that'll be it. So we have our, our first quick example here, x squared over four plus y squared over nine equals one. So we can tell that this is an ellipse, right? This, this is an ellipse. We have two positive terms, okay? One is not negative. If so, this would be a hyperbola. Now, what is that semi-major axis length going to be? Well, it's just the square root of whatever's here, which is three. So we know that we're gonna have points right here and points right here, all right? And now, we have to deal with our semi-minor axis, which is going to be the, the length of that will be the square root of this denominator, okay, for the, the smaller number. 
all right? And the square root of that is gonna be two, so we know that on the x-axis, we'll be going out to two here, two here. And then we'll connect. And there you go, that's our ellipse. So now what we wanna do is graph this. We have x squared over four minus y squared equals one. Now we see here that one of our terms is negative, which means we're dealing with a hyperbola here. Okay, now we're gonna look at the, the positive term. Okay, the positive term is the one with x. Now, the distance from the center, which in this case is going to be the origin, right? We don't have like an x minus three quantity squared or anything like that. But we know that the distance from the, the center to the vertex of one of our hyperbolas is going to be just the square root of this denominator, okay? The square root of the denominator of our positive term, okay? So we have a, we have a two, that's our square root of four. So we're going to have two points on our x-axis, the negative two and the positive two. Those are gonna be the vert vertices for our hyperbole, okay? Or hyperbolas, however you say that. But now, what else do we have to do? Well, really, nothing else, okay? We can at least kind of sketch out what this graph is going to be looking like, okay? It's going to end up looking like this. As far as how do you know whether it's going to open uh, up and down or left and right? Well. Our, vert, our vertices pretty much tell us that already, right? Our vertices were apart from each other, I guess you could say kind of horizontally, right? So, so they were apart this way and not this way. And that's going to tell you that we're gonna be opening left and right, okay? They're not gonna be up and down and then opening left and right. That doesn't really make too much sense, right? So anyways, there you go. You have an ellipse and you have some hyperbolas okay so anyways that's gonna do it for this video so if this video helped you make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left you can also view the playlist for vectors and the geometry of space in the next video in the series lastly if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me i have my patreon linked in the description down below along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out see you soon